Hello and welcome back to our level selection uh, mini series. This series was voted for by my patrons and YouTube members, so big thank you to all of my patrons for their continued support and my YouTube members for their support as well. And thank you again for voting for this. So this episode we're going to end it up with a UI episode. So we've got our character running around our level select screen here using keyboard inputs or you can use gamepad inputs, whatever you want to use, it'll still work. Um, and it'll just travel along paths to particular nodes. Now what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to add a UI element to the screen once we are reached our destination. So we can click on it and enter that level. So to prepare for this I quickly made some basic levels and they're all here. So level 1 uh, looks like this, level 2 looks like this, level 3 this and you get the idea they will change colors so um, let's go back to our main menu and in here we need to make a UI element so the UI it will be added to the screen when we reach our destinations so first of all let's create the screen so let's go and create a new user interface widget blueprint and we'll call this one heads up display and in there we want to add our various buttons now this can be quite simple you can go quite complex with this it's totally up to you um, but I'm just gonna keep it quite simple so over we're gonna have a little box on the right hand side here saying the level name uh, what would be a picture and then a button to enter the level so in here let's do that so I'm gonna drag a border out and we're gonna size that appropriately over here on the right and there we go so we're selected, I want to change its anchor to be on the right hand side of the screen. At the moment, its anchor is here in the top left, which is okay if your screen is this aspect ratio. But not all screens are, they're all very different sizes. So if we make sure we anchor it to the right hand side, it will give its relative position to that anchor. So on the anchors, we we'll choose on the right hand side and choose this one here. Okay, so let's now change the contents of this. So I want to change the color of the background here to something not white here. So let's change the brush color here and let's do black and turn it alpha down to 0.8 and click OK. So that's our box done. Next we're going to put in some fields in here with a vertical box. So let's add a vertical box to this border. Inside that vertical box we're going to add some text for the level name. So drag that in and over here we'll call level name. So the level name will be for placeholder for now, level name. And then you may have a picture next in the box. So I'm going to drag image in and we'll make that uh we'll actually fix that to a particular size actually. So let's right click on the image and wrap with a size box. Click on the size box, you can change the width and height. So the width I'm going to change to uh, 300 and the height will change to uh, 150. And let's change the width actually a bit lower, 250, 200. Uh, oh wait, it's because the size box is if you're center aligned. So make sure you align your center first of all, that would help. So let's do 300, there you go, that's what I want. And I'm just going to put some padding on this one here. So up top, see padding, change the top value here, and let's add in 100. No, let's do 30. There we go. The level name, I'm going to put in center as well. Click on level name, center aligned, center aligned, and that'll do there. Next, we're going to put in a button at the bottom here to indicate that we can go into the level. So drag a button into your vertical box. And there it goes. At the moment, it's stretching it over here to full width. So change that to the center and center a line there. And then click on size and click fill. And that'll fill the available space that's remaining. Inside this button, we're going to put in some text and drag it on top. And that text is going to say enter level. Just going to change its appearance a little bit by changing its color to black. And then adding some padding around uh, its sides a little bit here. So let's change the padding here to 10. And left and right we'll put in 50. 
15. And there you go. That's our level. So the level name and the thumbnail are going to be variables which change based on whatever level we're currently standing on, as is the destination of when we click on this button. So all that's going to come from the level pads. So click compile and then go back to your level pad. And in here, we want to add our various level details. So new variable, this would be level name. And the text type for that, or sorry, the variable type for that will be text. Next one will be a level thumbnail. And that'll be a texture 2D. And finally, we'll have destination. And this will be a level reference uh, by name. So it'd be uh, name. There you go. Now all these will be editable, so tick the editable box for each one, turning all their eyeballs on to true. Hit compile. Then go back to your head up display. So this whole thing we're going to name in our border here, we're going to rename it to the level window. And we're going to tick is variable for this. Because we're going to make it hide on and uh, be visible. Next, we want to change our level name. So level name, click on that and change name here. Level name text and tick is variable. Same goes for our thumbnail. So thumbnail, we're going to change here to image thumbnail and make sure is variable is ticked. And button, we don't have to do nothing. We'll leave it as is. So now we've got to bind these values based on our level pad. So when we make this thing show, we need to send over what details we want. So go to graph and we're going to make a custom event in here called display level window. And let's just hide this stuff. So on display level window, we're going to drag the level window border variable out and choose get. From there, we can set the visibility of the widget to be visible. That's the first thing. Next, we need to get the level pad we want. So the level pad, we've actually already got a function for that. And if we go to our character, you will see the function there, get current level. And that outputs a level pad. So we can actually use that as part of our heads up display. So on the heads up display, we're going to get the character. So for that, we're going to do that on a construct event. And we're going to right click, get player character, and cast to our particular character. Uh, cast to level select character. And then I'm going to promote this one to a variable. Now I'm promoting it because it saves me doing the cast every single time and it's a bit cheaper. Now we've got the now we have the reference to it, we can just rely on this reference alone. So uh, character is there. So once we set the visibility of the level window to be visible, we want to get the character and we want to get, oh no, sorry, not get, we want to use the uh, le the function that we've got on our level set character, which we've called get current level. So get current level and you'll see cool function get current level. Now it gets us the level pad. We can, u we can use that level pad by casting to the level pad and then getting the various values from that level pad. So get level name. We can also get level thumbnail. We can also get the destination. So destination. Now we have these variables, we can now tie these together. So level name text, we'll drag that out and do set text. And that go to in text. We want then do the image thumbnail and set texture. And you'll see set brush from texture. And I come from level thumbnail. And finally destination. Now that's gonna be used in a different uh, event. So for that, we're going to just store that as a value here. So new value and do this level destination. And we'll change that to a name. 
and drag that out and choose set. Okay, and that's what happens when we display a window. It does all this stuff. And click compile. Next we want to do is the hide window. So let's do a custom event here and do hide level window. And that's going to be a lot simpler. It's just a level window. Set visibility. And change that to hidden. That's it. That's what we have to do for that. Then we've got a final thing, which is our button. So our button, we want to click on it in our variable list. And then scroll down, you'll see events on clicked. Click on this green button here. And it'll add an event for you. I'm going to drag it over here somewhere and let's now go to open level and level name will come from our level destination. And it's simple as that. So let's now add our HUD here to the screen. So I'm going to go to level, let's select character and we're going to go to uh, begin play. And Begin play in this case, I still want it to call the parent function maybe. And if you want to keep it calling the parent function, you can just right click on it and you'll see add call to parent function. And that'll add that call for you. Now I want to create the widget and choose a heads up display. And then we're going to do a promote to variable and call it HUD and then add to viewport. We turn back to heads up display and now that's all set up. We want to change our level window here to be hidden by default. So with the level window selected, the border selected, scroll down and you'll find the uh, behavior for visibility. Change that to hidden. Hit compile. So that's all done. So the HUD is now on the screen. It's hidden. We now need to toggle the display and hide accordingly. So display is going to be quite simple actually. It happens on this reach destination. So on reach destination, we're going to drag this out and tell our HUD here to display, oh, display level window. Then we want to hide it and we're going to hide it as soon as we start moving. So on the, after the do once, we want somewhere in there to do our uh, hide level window. So I'm just going to drag this and move this all along a little bit. Get our HUD out and tell it to hide level window. Plug that in and we'll do the exact same for move right. Like so. Hit compile and let's test this out. And there you go, our window appears. A few things we need to fix first. Uh, at the moment, I can't do nothing because the mouse isn't showing, so we need to change that. And also, we need to make it so the level window for the first level appears whilst we're standing on it. So let's go through that process. And also, we need to add our level pads details to it. So this one here, let's change the name of it. From nothing to, um, we'll go Sonic Wires, we go Green Hill Zone. And the destination is going to be level one. And the destination has to match the name of your individual levels. So I've named my level one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm just like naming mine level one. So for this one, click on here. And to the uh, Sonic theme, chemical plant zone. And we'll change that to level two. Uh, over here, this will be the special stage we'll call it special stage level three and we got this one over here and i've run out of forgotten all the uh, oh no casino night zone we'll go casino night zone testing my psychic knowledge at the moment and that'd be level four and then finally, we've got um, 
I don't know. Labyrinth. Uh, I forgot how to spell labyrinth. Is that right? I don't know. Let's call it Death Egg. <laughs> I've forgotten all the names of the Sonic levels. Death Egg Zone, and that'd be level 5. So, we've now got our 5 level set up. We now need to tell it to appear with the, with the mouse. So, let's go into our HUD again. And onto Graph. So, once we take the display, at the end here, we're going to get the player controller. Set show mouse cursor and tick that to be true. And then we want to set input mode to game and UI. We then on the hide want to do get player controller. Set show mouse cursor to false and set input mode to game only. Now if you do control inputs, you set up the control inputs that you would normally uh, by putting focus onto the uh, widget itself. Uh, but I haven't got a controller co connected, but it's exactly the same process any, as any other widget uh, you have. So that's all done. Let's now test this out. So save that and push play. So, oh, we need to fix this bit first, but we'll do that in a minute. Let's go and test the menu. So go into here, that comes up, chemical plant zone, great, hit enter level, and boom, we're in a level. So that's excellent, that's all we want, okay? So I'm gonna go back into my level here, and this one I'm gonna show up straight away. Now the easiest way of doing that is on level character here, is call the uh, reach destination right at the start. So I'm begin play to do reached destination because technically you have reached your destination, you just didn't move anywhere. So we do that and push play, and there you go, enter level and test to a different level. Excellent. Okay, so that's that set up. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it, really. So, do a final test of this. So, Green Hill Zone, move around, it disappears. Work plant zone. Special stage. And I keep going to all my various points. And so, I want to enter the Casino Night Zone, enter, and there I am. And there we go, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment below and ask away. I'll try and answer as many as possible. Uh, one thing I, I assume some people may get lost with is when you drag your character into the world, you need to make sure you're possessing it straight away. To do that, you just go to details and do possess, and you'll see auto possess player, change that to player zero, and that'll work for you there. Uh, but if you have any further questions, leave a comment below and we'll answer them as soon as I can, if I'm able to. Thank you for everyone for watching this and thank you to all my patrons for their continued support and voting for this series. Uh, this wouldn't be possible without you guys, especially this video, as I wouldn't have made it otherwise. So thank you so much. If you have, want to influence what videos you see on the channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daly and sign up and you can vote on each month's poll. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.